Well, good morning, everybody. We're GFBS. We're Grand Fork's best source. Oh, we are so looking forward to this show today. Joining us, filmmaker Matt Fern. We're going to be talking about the new documentary called Fighting Over Sue. This is going to be a good one. We've been waiting for a week for this. Today's show brought to you by Do So Photography. Get a hold of Bobby Do So. You want those Christmas cards to look just perfect? There's a way you can do a lot of it on your own. He'll do the dirty work, but you can do a lot of it at home. Here's what you do. You go to dosophoto.com or call him up, 218-230-4325, and he'll get you rolling. Uh, you get on that website, follow the instructions, and before you know it, you have got some wonderful Christmas cards to send out to all your family and friends. He's still doing senior portraits, too, family portraits, corporate pics. You want to find out more, dosophoto.com. You can check out our walls here, the Do So Photo Photography Hall of Fame, Wall of Fame. Mark Dobmeyer metal picture is really cool. If you want to look the best, Do So Photography can do just that. If you got any questions, feel free to call us up, 701-213-0863. That's 701-213-0863. And before we get rolling with the show, it is time now for our daily segment called Jokes My Neighbor Tells Me. Here we go, Jokes My Neighbor Tells Me. Where does a fast food mascot go when they die? Where does a fast food mascot go when they die? Well, they go to Burgatory. (laughs) All right, what'd you think of that one? Oh, that was good. I like that that, one. Not too bad. Uh, Let's see, Matt, what did you think of that joke my neighbor tells me? Uh, (laughs) Off to a rough start. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, We are tickled to have you on the show. Uh, Matt Fern, first off, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, thank you so much for for having me. Uh, I'm born and raised in Bismarck, North Dakota. I still live in Bismarck. I'm a filmmaker. I went to film school in Bozeman, Montana, um, and I have been running my own commercial video production company for about 10 years now in Bismarck. And uh, you do a pretty good job. I mean, uh, you got Addy Awards. You've been on the Travel Channel, CNN. It's not like you're just one of these guys making home movies out of his basement. You know, well, <laughs> it's funny you say that because since the pandemic happened, I finished this movie in my basement. <laughs> okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I really love um, being able to tell stories through video and uh, I, I feel very blessed just with my job, with my commercial company. I get a new job every day. I get to go to hospitals, construction sites, all around North Dakota, and um, just tell a new story. Um, so I, I love it um, very much. But this, this film has been kind of a passion project on the side. It's been an a unpaid part-time job for about seven years. And um, excited to finally get it out in the world. Now, why what made you decide to make this documentary in particular? Well, uh, I wanted to tell a larger story. I, I did a video series called Daily Dakotan um, about 10 years ago where I profiled different um, North Dakotans and it's just short film stories. And so I wanted to uh, do a feature film um, and I knew I had to do a documentary because I don't have many funds. And so documentary is just easier to produce. Mm-hmm. And um I was trying to find something that I would be able to tell uniquely in North Dakota. Um, and the fighting Sioux issue was just all over the news. And I, uh, more of a movie guy, I've never been to uh, the Ralph before I started this project. Um, but I had a lot of experience filming on reservations around North Dakota. And I felt like there was a story to tell there of the relationship between native and non-native communities in North Dakota. And so uh, with kind of that being the plan, I started, <laughs> I was hoping it'd be done in a year or two, mm-hmm. but uh, that was, that was the, get, the thing that got me started. You ever have any idea this was going to be seven years in the making? No, <laughs> I did not. My <laughs> wife did not either. Uh, it, just, it just seemed like every step along the way, there'd be a, a setback. Um, but uh, I'm very, very proud of the movie and I'm, I'm very happy that it's finally getting out there today. You know, we uh, we're lucky enough. Uh, we've seen this fighting over Sue, and uh, I think it is incredible. Um, now, did you find uh, when you were interviewing, uh, especially the Native Native American people, it it kind of seems to me like the older, you know, the the tribal leaders, the older group, it seems like they think a lot differently than say the younger 
generation. It, did you? I mean, it's kind of the vibe I got off it. I I didn't get that while I was filming that, um, and I think maybe um, there there's a lot of interviews that didn't get in the movie. Um, but I mean, it really was. It, I didn't find like a, a clear path on the issue of all mm-hmm. these these people thought this way, these didn't. Everyone had their own unique approach or their unique background to it. Um, in the film, though, I did try to create a balance, and so you know that that misconception might have come across, but. In filming it, um, it really was a, a, a kind of personal preference. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I noticed now, uh, you know, I was talking to you before this. Uh, I used to do um, a bunch of announcing at the Ralph Engelstead Arena for uh, Fighting Sioux Hockey. And and we had an intro uh, that was all scripted out about uh, integrity and fighting battles, overcoming adversity, tradition, and all that kind of things. And, and, and we honored the Sioux name in a, I thought a very honorable way, but then um, one clip that, that kind of caught me in the film was, um, and I saw this at uh, the NDSU Bison uh, UND football game, uh, football game. And it was, uh, it was a bad thing with a Buffalo and a Sioux logo. Uh, and and it, that's really the only thing in all the years that uh, I've been covering uh, UND sports that was really the one thing that that kind of took me aback a little bit. But otherwise, uh, we don't really, we never did really see it up here. At least I didn't. Um, you know, the the bad name calling and the chants and stuff. You're going to get that at no matter what college sport or game you go to. But um, it, it's just it's really too bad that this had to turn this way. And and we've got a lot to talk about. But um, uh, do you think the NCAA maybe has too much power? That is above my my pay grade. Uh, I, I, again, I'm not much of a sports guy. Um, um, the NCAA didn't uh, talk to me for this film, and so I had to use um, their own clips um, to kind of have their point of view. Um, I know a lot of fans feel that way, but I, I personally uh, don't know enough about the NCAA. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, to, you know, to, to call it, make that call. Well, they're making more and more teams change their names, their mascots, all of that kind of stuff. Um, the thing is, now UND could have stuck with the name, uh, but then with, with all the sanctions that would have been drawn up against them, uh, you just as well could have dropped hockey. Uh, and and I tell you what, Matt, if you would have been here during this whole thing, uh, the whole town was, I mean, just buzzing about this for a long time. Uh, myself, I, I worked at the radio stations that covered UND sports. So we were basically told, you know, just keep your mouth shut. You don't really have an opinion about this. Although the majority of us did have an opinion and it was, uh, you know, this is my opinion about others' opinions, but we all wanted the name to stay. You know, uh, yeah. I'm just kind of curious too. And, uh, you know, not to, I'm kind of speculating here, I guess. But from what I saw of it, it seemed like more of the people that were in support of it for, were from like the Spirit Lake tribe, and the ones that were opposed to it were from Standing Rock. Did I take that incorrectly? That's just the way I had to structure the film. Um, there's just there's so much in there. Um, I had to make it pretty quick. So Spirit Lake did um, did approve, uh, did have a vote um, to keep the name and logo. Um, Standing Rock didn't, and so just the. The sake of the narrative, I had to kind of keep it moving pretty quick. Um, so I did find people on both sides. So I don't know if that's a, a fair thing. And the, and the big thing that we we can't make that call is because Standing Rock never had a chance to vote. Mm-hmm. So we, we don't know what that that percentage is be, between the two of them. Now, um, to jump back on your last point, um, you know, I did almost all of the interviews were filmed seven years ago in 2013. Oh, OK. So. They were all uh, in the heat of it. And that's the big thing that I took away when I started filming this in 2013 was how passionate people were, how um, invested people were on both sides. And um, it was it was kind of jarring because, you know, we we scheduled our interviews just logistically of like, you know, we're in this town, we're in this side of the neighborhood. Let's get all these people interviews. And it happened to be just kind of back and forth uh, of like someone very forward and very against it mm-hmm. and so that was that was very interesting to like go from one house and then go to the other house and the passion was the same on both sides 
Um, and then also um, in terms of UND, you mentioned you, you weren't able to speak about it. Um, UND was our first call just to see what can I get access to? What, who can I talk to? Where can I film? And um, they wouldn't um, meet with me. And I, you know, it was like, even off the record, can I just mm -hmm. show you who I am? Like I'm, I'm coming at this from a, a good place. Um, and they wouldn't talk to me. So that was a, that was a big obstacle from the beginning of, do I even move forward on, on telling this story without their involvement? Um, but, you know, the way we kind of got around it was we just reached out to a lot of people individually. And a lot of people from the university did say what you just said. Mm -hmm. they, they would love to talk about it, but uh, yeah, unfortunately well, they can't. But a few people did, you know, and a big one was Tim O'Keefe. Oh, yeah. He was yep. actually still in office. Mm -hmm. and he invited us, like, to the Alumni Foundation to do his interview. And the whole time, me and the crew are like, are we going to get kicked out? You know, <laughs> uh, but uh, he was very gracious. He gave a great interview. And... Uh, and so, uh, yeah, the, the film wouldn't be possible without the people in it. Um, so I'm very grateful for everyone who gave me their time to, to talk. Well, I know uh, you as creating this, um, got to be kind of on the fence about this. Uh, you you know, you, you're just trying to get everybody else's point of view. And, and when we look at the media release, I'll just give you guys a little hint. Um, they interview uh, tribal leaders, students, alumni, bloggers, reporters, politicians, and super fans. Now, you know what side of the fence I'm on on this thing. And um, when you talk about how tough it was to get an interview with UND, well, at that time, President Dr. Robert Kelly, um, if you were a fan of keeping the nickname, uh, he definitely was not a whole lot of help. <laughs> he, he just, you know, he, he stepped in from out of town. Uh, wasn't here very long, got the name changed, and boom, it's like he disappeared. And and another thing I wanted to mention before I forgot, uh, towards the end, uh, when he had the little kid crying, uh, because they were changing the name, and, and you could hear his dad consoling him in the background saying, hey, don't worry, we can still cheer for them, and we'll still say it. But I knew a lot of grown men that acted the same way when this was all said and done. <clears throat> yeah, uh, in regards to President Kelly... We reached out to him. Uh, we couldn't get an interview with him. Um, I did get the sense from from the clips we had that he he was ready to retire it here pretty quickly. Um, yeah, I wish I would have had a chance to talk to him. The only I only have one interaction with him, and I was I was filming with the drone some campus shots, mm -hmm. and uh, I was uh, my drone was like dying. The battery was dying. I was trying to like salvage it. And he just walked right by me. And I, I was kind of confused. I was like, oh, hey, I should <laughs> him. But I, oh, my drone's going to crash. Uh, and he just looked at me and smiled and left. But that was my only interaction with him while I was filming it. But, wow. Um, I tell you what we're going to do. We're, we're going to take just a quick break here, Matt, um, and uh, we're going to do an ad here. But uh, maybe, Paul, this would be a good time for you to switch this over and we can play that trailer when we come back from this break. Uh, would that work for you? Do you need me to unplug this and give it to you or not? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right, we'll be back uh, here with Matt Fern in just a couple of minutes. Now, if you've been putting off that remodel or something new around your house for maybe too long, uh, maybe family members are starting to bug you. Maybe you need that new bathroom remodel or a kitchen. Maybe you want to build a new garage. That's when you get a hold of executive properties. They'll get it done. They'll get it right. They'll get it done right for you. And they do all types of commercial and residential work. In fact, uh, if you look at the Jimmy John's restaurants in Grand Forks, uh, they did all the remodel work on them. They do incredible stuff. Uh, and they do bathrooms and kitchens and doors and siding and concrete. Uh, over 30 years experience, Barry Romo is the guy, and he's got an incredible crew. They'll take care of you. They have senior and referral discounts. They're willing to work with any budget. And, you know, we are going to get snow soon and they do snow removal at executive properties so call them up for all your contractor needs 701-330-1273 or go to executiveproperties.org and check out the reviews on facebook and google uh, they do incredible work you'll love it you will be happy executive properties your one-stop company that can do it all and uh we are back now with uh filmmaker matt fern and uh we're gonna play the trailer uh see if we can get this going here we'll play the trailer are we ready Go ahead. 
After 80 years, the University of North Dakota is retiring its Fighting Sioux nickname and logo. It has been a hot button issue for years. The NCAA is saying the logo and the name are hostile to Native Americans, and the teams for this university risk forfeiting playoffs if this logo is displayed by their athletes, cheerleaders, or band, or if they just keep the name. gear is flying off the shelves. It's big, big business. They made it so that we would lose. This thing has been centuries in the making. It is a pride of North Dakota. It is a pride of our nation. Politically, we have no voice. We have no money, and our numbers are so few. We're just a forgotten people. I've done logos before for other people, but yeah, not like this one though. Well, I've got to like the uh, quote from Ben Breen there. Uh, we're probably going to have to rehook this up over here so we yep. get back with him. I think I can get it. <clears throat> I would like to also point out that. I believe Mr. Bennett Breen is actually watching with us right now. Yeah, um, yeah, he is. Bennett is uh, actually watching the show right now, Matt. And um, we've actually had him in the studios here and did some uh, did a show with us. But um, we know what the, all the work that he did for the UND Fighting Sioux and everything. Uh, man, he put his heart and soul into it. Um, every, everybody loved uh, what he came up with, what he created. Um, of course, a couple of the tribes weren't too happy with it. Um, but, you know, I... I, the NCAA, it didn't matter what we did or what anybody did. I mean, for Pete's sakes, you know, it, it got to North Dakota government got involved with Measure 4 and all that stuff. But, um, again, when, when you said you weren't sure about the NCAA, uh, it just it, there's no way to beat these guys uh, once, once they make up their mind about anything. All right. Um, here's another funny thing, uh, and, and, and this was in the movie. Uh, in the documentary, uh, Ralph Ingalls did great guy, uh, actually from my hometown. Uh, that building was actually about $110 million that uh, Ralph gave to the university. Uh, and he was ready to tear the building down. Uh, what did you think about that as far as a guy being passionate about something like a name or a logo? Um. I mean, he, he had the same passion as, as a lot of the fans. The difference was that he had a lot of money to, mm, yeah. to, to make something happen behind it. Um, I knew, you know, also starting this movie, I knew Ralph would be a part of it. Um, just me. I, I knew the name Ralph Engels Serena. I had no idea what he looked like or what, what he did or any of that stuff. Um, so it was interesting uh, learning about his story and it's, it's um, quite a enterprise and, um, the Ingolstead Foundation, we did try to speak with Ralph's daughter. Mm -hmm. um, she very politely declined, which we, we totally understand. Um, but we were able to speak with Grant Schaff, who is the Ingolstead family attorney. Yep. And so between him and Earl, Earl was just such a good friend with, with Ralph um, and news clips. I felt like we, we had enough to uh, at least um, touch on on that story for him. Um, um, and then. The other thing I, I did hear, you know, that one story, there's dynamite on there. I heard so many stories <laughs> of like, oh, they they have this or there's this hidden thing there, you know, all these different stories. And uh, I, I asked Ralph a couple of, uh, or not Ralph, uh, Earl, a couple of those, and he shot pretty much all of them down. Um, but the one in the film was just the funniest, how it all how it all cut together. You know, when when uh, you first visited the Ralph Ingolstead Arena, uh, I mean, the, the Sioux logo is all over. Uh, intentionally built that way, but you look at those um, marble floors. I think the marble it, it came from like South Africa or something. But when the NCAA starts putting their nose into it and and they say you no know, more logo, you know, yeah, could even think about how much money it would even cost to try to replace all that stuff. I don't think it could have even feasibly been done. It probably would have cost more at that time than it did when they built the whole building to tear all that out, replace it all. I mean, that's just the dollars involved here. Are, it's just mind boggling. Yeah. And, you know, when I filmed this in 2013, it was like right when um, 
the logo was removed. And so I was actually thinking that all was going to happen. So that's why I really wanted to get into the Ralph um, just to document it all, thinking they're going to take it all out. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it really didn't change that much, I don't think. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah, no, I, I was aware of that. And so that also is why, you know, we really tried to, to film. And, um, yeah, the Ralph experience was really, really cool. And I would say we probably went to uh, five games and and were able to film at. And mm-hmm. so that's the film has, like, five different stuff all cut together. So that's how it looks like we have multiple angles. Sure. Stuff. That was just me going a couple different times. Okay, so no, so okay. can I t- uh, just touch base on that really quick too? Because something I took away from the movie, and it was actually the couple that wrote the book at the end. Um, I, I believe it was "Are We Not Sue Enough" or, or something along those lines. Um, yeah. But the the conversation of I can see how a lot of people would disagree with the logo, but also the ones that were for it felt like they were getting another slap in the face by taking it away. And also losing more of that heritage and stuff that they had tied to it. Yeah, I mean that that was an argument we heard um, from a couple people, and that um, the people you're talking about is um, David and Eunice Davidson. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're out of De- Devil's Lake, and um, just awesome couple. Um, couldn't be more gracious with their time. In addition to their um, book, aren't we Sue enough? They also have a clothing line, um, which I think is called Sue Pride. I don't know if they still did, but we, I filmed some of that too. Um, you know, I, I met with them later and they had this line um, with the Sue Pride and um, it was really, really cool. But again, just, it was so hard to fit everything in there. Every person has like a bunch of little extra stuff I had to cut out just to kind of balance it. Uh, When I mentioned earlier in the interview, Matt, uh, about the younger tribal members compared to the older tribal members, uh, what I wanted to get at was back in the ceremony uh, that they had uh, with the pipe and and everything and given that name and you hear you hear the the elder, you know, tribal leaders or even tribal members say that when something like that is done, that is done forever forever. And then a different generation comes along a couple of generations later, and, and they tend to disagree with that. So what, what – and, and I don't know if you've got an answer for this or not, but um, shouldn't they say if it's against their beliefs, well, then they are going against their beliefs because they say it's supposed to be a done deal, supposed to be a done deal forever, but yet, you know, 50 years down the line, it all gets changed. Yeah, the argument I heard to that is that – um, there was dispute on what that ceremony really meant uh, of um, giving University of North Dakota the right to use the name um, or giving um, President Starcher at the time a uh, Lakota name. And I looked at like press clippings of it. I tried finding as much as I could and it never like really definitively said um, I mean, to be honest, it kind of sounded a little bit more like they were giving it just to Starcher. Mm-hmm. There's, I never saw like a specific, this is what it was for. Sure. Um, so uh, that's the argument I heard for it. Um, I, you know, I heard, I, I just, I heard so many stuff from both sides. I didn't feel comfortable on making like a specific. Um, this is what it meant. And so that's why the film has both sides to that argument. On it. Okay. And, and another uh, part of the film that, that really piqued my attention was um, uh, you'll talk to natives when they say Sue um, actually means snake. Uh, well, if I remember right, uh, um, forgive me if I'm wrong here, but the Lakota and, and they were considered when they called them Sue, which meant snake. It, I kind of got out of the film that that was a good thing because of how they went to war, how they did things. They, they hid in the tall grass and they pounced and they attacked. And and so really, I mean, I could I get it that they say, well, they're basically calling us a snake. But then say the rest, because actually calling them a snake, it, it wasn't meant, I don't think, in a bad way, but in more of a good way, uh, especially when you're going to battle and stuff like that. Yeah, and and the film shows both sides to that argument as well of um, some people who find that as a compliment and other people um, who don't even like that name. And, you know, that was another thing. The Standing Rock tribe even um, had 
discussions. I don't know if they had a vote offhand, but I know they had discussions. The tribal council had discussions about even changing their name, the mm-hmm. Sioux name, not in relation to the um, fighting Sioux, mm-hmm. uh, but just to be Lakota, Dakota people over um, Sioux people. Um, so th- that is a debated issue here. Um, there's no black and white answer I found to it. And, and, and I got to give you a lot of credit because uh, me being over here and being involved with UND hockey and sports for so many years, I would have had a very, very difficult time creating something as good as what you did because I don't think I'd be able to, to you know, not really have a say about it. Um, what did you think about the fan base uh, when you were at games at the Ralph? I mean, it, really, the name Sue has fighting Sue has never really gone away. Yeah, well, the fan base I, I love. Um, I mean, there's nothing better than the sports event and the Ralph, the excitement and the game. And uh, yeah, it is it is absolutely awesome. And, uh, you know, the film I even the first kind of scene in the film is of is of a fan, Diana Beaton. Mm-hmm. And um, and I don't think any of them are bad people or anything. And um I, I just really try to be even handed in this documentary and show both sides. And I really tried making the movie um, for both sides in some ways mm-hmm. of, I wanted the people for the logo to feel like I did a good job on their side and, and represented their view. And they, they dug all the stuff on that. Um, and then the other side, the same thing of felt like they had to say, and then that's kind of the whole point of the film of being able to see both of those sides because when you're watching on the news or article or talking with your friends, it's it's hard to see that. And I feel like that's the magic of, of movies that you can tell a bigger story. And in terms of like what to keep in and what to do, um, the big kind of guiding point for me was, was it's a movie. And so I, there's a very clear structure, beginning, middle and end. Oh yeah. Um, there's character arcs, there's development, all that stuff. Um, and so that's kind of how I was able to separate myself um, from my personal uh, issue, thoughts on it, which really was, I'm just trying to educate myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and my choices of what to keep in were really from a storytelling standpoint of um, what's a way I can keep people's um, engagement. Because, man, an hour and a half, it is a beast. Yeah, to, to and it's there's, there's never a no dull moment. In this movie. There's no voiceover. There's no narrator coming in telling mm-hmm. you this happened, this happened. I had to tell this whole story just in editing, um, just in putting ordering clips. You know, that, that's how the story is told. You know, one of the things that I thought was so great about the movie is that it wasn't just about the controversy of keeping the name or losing the name. It was the process that everybody went through to get this name change done. And, you know, so seeing all those steps that were taken um, by the school and by the NCAA and all the things that happened leading up to it, um, I thought that that was really interesting. Awesome. Yeah, I, I appreciate that. And um, I, I really tried chronicling the whole journey of it. And, you know, one of the things that I always laugh at is that towards the end of the movie, we have this whole sequence of how they renamed everything. Mm-hmm. And afterwards, they say it cost $300,000. Yeah, I was going to bring that I don't up, have too. A lot of money. That is so much money yeah. to me. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, it just seems like, wow, that could have done so many other things. Yeah, but, and, uh, and $300,000 for a name that a lot of people really weren't happy yeah. with. Um, we did get a get, – we're getting all kinds of texts, uh, by the way, of people watching the show. Heather uh, lives over in Devil's Lake, by Devil's Lake. I'm excited to see it and see people from my community on the show. Um There's going to be a lot of people fired up about this. Now, I I do want to ask you this. This is kind of a would have question. Um, Say you decided to maybe you would have been a student at UND. You go there four years, five years or whatever. Uh, Would you still have decided? uh, I mean, again, it's a would have question. Do you think you still would have made tackled something like this? Oh, definitely not. (laughs) Uh Definitely not. Um, Because I I get it of... um, I feel like the film wouldn't be really taken seriously um, because there is just that, even if I could do the exact same film, I believe there would be a misconception of, I have, um, I have kind of a bias going into it, which is true. Um, if, if that would be the case. Um, but uh, I, I felt like that the reason I took this on um, was that I wasn't attached to it was that I didn't really know much of it. And so I felt like 
that I, I'm a good fit to tell this story. I've filmed on reservations. I film all across North Dakota. I have the infrastructure to be able to, to film these. Um, and I don't have any bias. I don't have any really knowledge. I know that sounds bad, but that's, that's the best way I found to go into a documentary is to, to be as, um, uh, kind of not ignorant, but just not aware mm-hmm. of everything as possible because that allows you to be the viewer. Sure. And so you can kind of find the story and find what's interesting that way. You know, um, uh, uh, one thing I will tell the people uh, when you are going to watch this, um, don't run up to get a, another beer or run to the bathroom because what is this about 80 minutes long? And, I and it, it, there is not a single five second part of any of that movie that you want to miss because I mean, you are all over the place on this, and, and it is so cool. I mean, even from the history, you know, UND was actually a school before North Dakota was even a state. I didn't know that until I watched yeah. this documentary. Uh, that building, I mean, it looks like a building out in the middle of a farm field, and that's the University of North Dakota. Uh, so it it's not just all about the Sioux name itself, but there's a lot of overall history about the University of North Dakota. Yeah. And, that, and that's a big reason I wanted to tell this story because I, I feel like an hour and a half on just a name and logo. That's super. Where could that go? Um, but I felt like that's a great opportunity to to go into the history of North Dakota and ultimately um, the the relationship between Native and non-Native communities. That is something I feel like is not ever really talked about. Um, and so that that was probably the biggest driving force. Um, or one of the biggest driving forces to, to tell this story. Okay, now the documentary, uh, Fighting Over Sue, it comes out tomorrow. Is that correct? It is out. Okay, it it's out. out. Okay. Um, yep. You can uh, watch it on demand. Um, you just go to fightingoversue.com and it'll walk you through how to do it. Um, it's exclusively through vimeo.com. Um, so you got to get Vimeo, which is totally free. But as soon as you get Vimeo, then you can either rent it for 48 hours or you could buy it and watch it as many times as you want. Um, it also is in um, eight movie theaters. Um, not all right now, but um, uh, as they come today, I believe it is in Williston and Bismarck. Um, and then in this, this weekend, I got to look at my map. <laughs> I got a lot. Um, this weekend, I think it's playing um, in Kenmere as okay. well. Is it uh, ever going to make it to the Grand Forks theaters? You know, it should have been um, mm-hmm. today, but unfortunately, um, you know, the, the AMC at Grand Forks um, declined to carry the movie because it was available online on the same day. That's called Day and Date. And so that's been a big challenge on getting in the corporately owned theaters. Um, but the non-corporate owned theaters, the River City Cinema um, in East Grand Forks, mm-hmm. I have been partnering with for a long time and we've been working to get it out. They were my first call. They were the first theater on board. And last week, um, the Minnesota governor shut down all movie theaters till the middle of December. Um, but um, to still help them, uh, we did create a bunch of these little popcorn cups and uh, stress pucks. If you there get you go. Up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, mini posters. Um, and these will be available at uh, River City Cinema. Um, for uh, to go okay and so uh, if you want to support uh, the Grand Forks theater um, I encourage you to go pick up popcorn and get some uh, some of these free merchandise and and go watch it at home um, although when it opens in mid-December they'll it'll be the first movie they're playing yeah so have you tried reaching out to the Empire to see if they could play it oh uh, yeah Empire we were actually gonna do our premiere there um, but just the issue with the Empire um, is that we need to we need to rent it out. We need to buy it as a venue. Oh. And so... Uh, and that I'm costs money. Myself. Yeah. <laughs> and so... Uh, and, and, uh, and, and that's too bad because River Cinema 15 over at East Grand Forks, uh, our, my favorite movie theater. Um, I'm a Minnesota resident. Awesome. And, uh, you know, Governor Walls, he's just kind of sucking the fun out of, out of everything. And uh, it's too bad because... I know uh, the word out now, especially since, you know, I've been watching this and checking this out. This has got a lot of people interested in Grand Forks and East Grand Forks. There's a lot of people that live in this town that played for the University of North Dakota or have some ties with the University of North Dakota. And uh, I I tell you what, uh, man, today would have been the day that you should have been in town because 
we could have taken you out on a tour of the town and uh, you would have been like an instant celebrity uh, this weekend. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, pre- I just want people to be able to see this movie, you know, and I, I made amends long ago. If, if, if I never make any money off this movie, uh, if I get sued and uh, if, if it just is a big, uh, a big failure, uh, I, 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 I'm just proud of getting it out there and I'm proud of what it is. And so, uh, so that, that helps me sleep at night. <laughs> if no one likes it, I, I, I think it's all right. Um, you know, that's the thing. You can make a documentary or a movie. Not everybody's going to agree with you, and but you did. You hit all sides of this. You didn't take a stance. You didn't take a side. You did it the way a true documentary was supposed to be done. And we did hear from all sides on this. I mean, you didn't really leave anybody out. If it didn't matter what kind of a person they were, whether they were a super fan, whether they were an ex player, whether they were native or not, you hit every part of the ballpark on this and you did talk to every kind of person and you did get all of their thoughts so i don't think you could have done any better on this i think it's incredible awesome <laughs> do you have anything else that in the means works? a lot thank you very much you got anything else in the works got any uh, new ideas that you're thinking about Oh yeah. Um, so uh, hopefully in the summer I can shoot a fiction film. I'd like more of a schedule. I, I, I'd like to know when the movie's over. Um, so I uh, wrote a, a film um, that deals with a lot of the same issues that this documentary deals. So just that um, relationship between native and non-native communities. And uh, I hope to shoot that next summer. And again, I hope to shoot it all across North Dakota. I, I think North Dakota is I, I love North Dakota, and I think it's a huge advantage I have as a filmmaker um, to, to take advantage of the people and the places in this state. And so uh, hopefully this movie does well uh, to the point where I can just replicate this business model of producing my own film and then distributing it. And just every couple of years, tell a new story in, in North Dakota. So next time you're around here filming or working on something, would it be possible for us to tag along with you for half a day? Yeah, for sure. Maybe the we can is, learn something. You know, people always want to come on filming, but it's always it's very it's very stressful for me because it's usually stuff is going wrong. I'm sure mm-hmm. you guys oh, yeah. know this stuff. And so I would say 90% of filmmaking is like problem solving. Mm-hmm. Of uh, There's a plane over you or the light doesn't work. Or oh, yeah. Happy to have you along, but it's, it's not as fun as, as it might sound. It's usually just... That, that's all right, and, and we get that. Now, um, we just got a text, uh, by the way, Matt. Um, says, I really want to watch the show. How can I watch it? Why don't you tell the listeners and the people watching right now, again, how they can get this show? Go to fightingoversue.com, and you'll have an option to either watch it online or watch it in a theater. And if you click the theaters, it shows all the theaters showing it. Um, you have to check the theater schedule because not all of them are, are playing right now. Um, or if you want to watch it immediately, you can go on the on-demand section. And the on-demand will walk you step-by-step step, um, how to watch it. And it's through Vimeo.com. So you just have to download Vimeo on your phone uh, or download it on your TV. Or if you don't want to download anything, you can just go right on your computer browser on Vimeo.com. And you can rent it for two days or watch it as many times as you want. Uh, do you know what the cost is to rent it for a couple of days? Rent is uh, twenty dollars for okay. forty-eight hours and thirty dollars to buy. Yep, uh, um, well worth it. I mean, well, well, that's well worth standard it. Standard price for for everything else, and and also the fact that it's actually in the movie theaters, and you could technically really uh, have a couple friends over, and and for twenty dollars have your own screening. I, I think that's a good deal. Yeah, and, and uh, you know what? Go to River Cinema, uh, get all your Sioux stuff that you've got in the background there. Uh, Then you rent it and you kick back on the recliners or the couch on the big screen and uh, you will. uh, I'm telling you, man, I absolutely loved it. I thought you did a tremendous job. Um, Anything you want to wrap this up with? Because I know you're I don't know if you'll have time today, but uh, pretty sure you're looking to take a little nap, aren't you? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I was up uh, right at midnight making sure everything uh, was working online. Um, The the big thing I just want to say is. I, I really, this film would not be possible without so many people's help. Um, I, I mean, I was the kind of connecting force throughout the seven years. 
but um, everyone uh, who gave an interview, who sent me footage, um, I would get so many people. I did a Kickstarter a couple of years ago to, to get some funds for this. Mm -hmm. And I got a lot of um, people messaging me just leads of, hey, talk to this person or, hey, you should think of this or that. And so I just want to say thank you to, to everyone who reached out and, and who helped make this movie happen. And, you know, if and there's little, if there's any names you want to drop of people that helped you, go ahead. Give them their dues, man. I mean, it's 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 hundreds. Uh, I would watch the credits of the movie, and I'm sure I'm missing people out there. But one person I will give a shout out if he's still watching is Bennett Breen. Oh yeah, uh, Bennett Breen was one of the first people I talked to, and uh, he was very gracious. Um, I hung out with him a couple of times, and uh, he even helped me with the Kickstarter. He came up to Grand Forks with me and signed some Sioux stuff to help me get funds to, to mm -hmm. get this movie out, and. Uh, um, this whole movie is kind of about Bennett. I mean, uh, he's, yeah. the logo, he's the one who created it. So. Actually, both him uh, and his brother Chuck are watching the show right now. Uh, awesome. well, did you get to meet no, Chuck? Shout out. Great guy. I'm not going to so do it. Bennett a... and Bennett, check your mail. You got a, a really cool uh, copy of the movie coming to you here today. How oh, so. about that? And I'm not going to be a spoiler, but there is a part in the movie with Bennett Breen that really, really got me angry. Yeah, so I, you're, I you're know what you're have, talking about. You're going to have to watch the movie to find out what it was. <laughs> uh, Matt. Thank you so much for spending uh, a heck of a busy day with us. Uh, when we first knew we had nailed this interview down, I, I mean, I've just been giddy all week about this, and we sure appreciate it. And, and I want you to hold on for a minute because we'll talk to you as soon as I get done with the outro, all right? Uh, so I appreciate the opportunity to be on, and it's just as much pleasure for me. I, I do watch your show, and uh, it's it's cool to be able to, to be part of it. So. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, there you go. That's Matt Fern, filmmaker, fighting over Sue. He told you how to get it. I recommend getting it. You will enjoy it if you are a UND hockey fan. Whether they're a fighting Hawks or the fighting Sue, you're going to love it. Hey, special thanks going out to Integrity Fundraisers. You know, in as little as two weeks, they can help any school, sports team, youth group, and nonprofits raise money for much-needed funds. They've got all kinds of personalized water bottles and mugs and drinkware and cutting boards, and just all kinds of cool things that you can get with your name and logo. They also support businesses and needs of business cards, brochures, or any printed materials. They do the design, the laser engraving, and they do shipping too. With over 300 clients, including GFBS, and $3 million raised locally, and over 390,000 students served, well, they can help you too. Integrity Fundraisers in the Grand Cities Mall. Call 701-402-2171 and let Integrity Fundraisers help you. And don't forget, we're now on Amazon Music. Just tell your smart speaker to play GFBS Podcast, and we're looking for your five-star re uh, reviews on Google, too. Well, I tell you what, we're off tomorrow for Turkey Day. Uh, we'll be back Friday. Not quite sure what we're doing yet. We had a cancellation, but we'll figure something out. Everybody have a great Thanksgiving. And again, thank you to Matt Fern. Check it out. Fighting over Sue. And make sure to like, share, and tag us. We're Grand Forks' best source, giving Grand Forks an identity again.